Hey, if you follow my channel, you're probably aware I just bought a new winter carry gun, my new 7-shot Smith & Wesson 586 L Comp 357 Magnum. You're probably also aware that there were a few things about this gun that I'm not thrilled with. Overall, it's an excellent gun, but there were a couple little tiny things that kind of irked me. One thing I had an issue with was a slight finish difference between the frame of the gun and the barrel of the gun. Now, I haven't contacted Smith & Wesson about this yet. Once I do, I'll update you on why that is or if they're going to do something about that or if something even needs to be done about that. But for now, there's nothing I can really do about that. I'm going to move on to the other two little issues I had with the gun that I can do something about. The first problem is this front night sight. This thing is useless. I can't see this solid black blade between the plain black rear sights in the daytime. And at night, that little uh, night sight there, that little tritium insert is useless. It's too small and dim to even see. So I'm gonna change this front sight. The other thing I'm not crazy about is this grip. They look great, but they don't feel all that comfortable. If you get a good high grip on the gun, these notches are just all wrong. These finger grooves, this bottom groove is just way too small. The top one is way too big. My second finger ends up resting right over this groove right here, right over this little high point. So I'm going to change this out. For a lot of people out there that were asking before I get to work on actually doing the changes here, I am carrying this gun in a DeSantis scabbard holster with a thumb brake. I have one of these in black and one of these in brown. They fit my 586 and they fit my 686 so they can serve double duty. These are really nice holsters. Now some people may not like the thumb brake, but when I'm carrying something like a revolver that's heavier up here than it is down here and it rides a little high, the thumb brake is probably a good idea. It keeps it from bouncing out of your holster if you're running or anything. And for extra ammo here, I'm carrying two seven shot speed loaders in my little belt pouch here. As you can see, these are seven rounders. So that's how I'm carrying it, and that's what I'm carrying with it. So let's get to work on doing those changes. Now to make these changes, I bought two items. I bought an XS Big Dot front sight, a night sight here, which has a big round white circle on it, so I should be able to see it now with my old eyes. And I bought a set of hardwood grips. I bought these off Amazon. They're from a company called Handicraft. They make handmade wooden grips. I'm not real sure how good they're gonna be. I haven't tried them yet, but I'm gonna give them a go. First thing I'm going to need to do is unload the gun, of course, and then I'm going to have to take off the front sight and the grips. Make sure I don't lose this little pin, set this off somewhere where I will be able to find it easily later. Then I need to wiggle that front sight loose. I might have to heat this thing because it does not want to come out of there, so it's probably locked tight it in. So I'm going to have to heat it up a little bit to loosen it. Now, before I take that front sight out, I want to show everyone that I did go ahead and change the grip. I've got to go buy a drill bit to change out the front sight because I can't find any of my number 54 drill bits. They're so small, I always either lose them or break them every time I buy them. So I got to go buy another handful of them every time I change a front sight. But I wanted to show this grip here and say it's no better. I mean, I do like the way it looks. I do like the way it feels. They do feel a little more hollow feeling because they are solid wood, not a laminate like the others. So I like the other ones better because they're a laminate. But the groove is a little bit bigger at the bottom here, the finger groove. But it's still hitting my second finger in the wrong place. It's just hitting a little higher on my second finger now. So I'm going to have to go back to the original grips because these just aren't doing it. My heat gun has definitely seen better days. I'm going to have to get a new one of these pretty soon. There, I finally got it out. That thing was stubborn. Okay, now I'm going to open up my little excess big dot sight here and put on the front sight. I don't know if I'm going to change the rear blade or not yet. I'm not really fond of those rear blades. Uh, I'm going to see how well this fits in the front of my rear blade that I have on my gun now. And I'm going to try it even with a bigger rear blade, one that I bought separate for my gun. But I'm just going to put on the front sight for right now. Okay, I'm just going to put a little red thread lock on the new front sight here so that it doesn't fall out while I'm drilling it and put it back in here. I just put it back in a second ago to put it in backwards. Now I'm going to make sure I put it in frontwards. Okay, now I'm just going to let that set in place for a few minutes, let it kind of firm up there, and then I will drill it for the pin. Oh, and just in case anyone's curious, it's a number 54 drill bit that you usually need for a Smith & Wesson front pin sight. It's actually smaller than a 1 16th. I see a lot of people use 1 16th, and then they wonder why their roll pin doesn't work anymore. You actually need a number 54 drill bit. Okay, now I'm going to drill the sight. Now that might sound scary to some people, but it's really easy to do. The sight itself, the foot of it is actually hollow. It's got a little hollow spot in the center of the sight foot there. So you just have to drill from both sides until you break through the little wall on both sides of that hollow area. Huh. 
you'll feel it go through the side of the site into the little hollow area. And now I'm just going to put the little pin back in the site. Okay, that front site is now on there and this is a lot better. As you can see there, that front site, a lot easier to pick up. There's no way you can miss that. Now I'm going to change out the rear site to the one that comes with it. But I'm not really sure I like this site, so I don't know if I'll leave it on there, but I'm going to try it for just a little bit. Now to get this site off, you actually have to break it. That's the bad thing about these. But I've got some extra ones, including an extra one that's taller. So if I break it to take it off and then don't like the one that came with this site, I'll just replace it with one that's more stock to the gun. Maybe even one that's a little bit taller in case this site is off a little bit as far as picture is concerned with the stock sights. Okay, now I'm gonna change the rear sight blade here. Now remember how I told you you have to break it to actually replace it? What I'm gonna do is adjust it to where this sight blade moves all the way to the right, and then just keep going till the screw breaks. <clears throat> okay, I think it broke and it did. All right there, you can see it's just sliding around in there now. So now I just gotta take this out. First, I'm just gonna push it all the way over to the other side now and unscrew the little nut on the end of it here. Now I gotta take this little screw head out of here and I gotta be sure to keep it cause I gotta have a little piece out of it. And it just shot out across the room. And luckily I found the pieces. They sprung out of there like an idiot. I pulled it straight out. I didn't mean to pull it so hard. Luckily they hit me right in the freaking eyeball and popped back down onto the table. So I was able to see where they landed. Okay, now I'll put the little plunger and spring back in the new blade sight and I'm gonna put that in there. Then I'm gonna use a popsicle stick here to push it up in there while I slide this down in so that I don't scratch anything. There, and it is in. Now I'll have to take the other little nut, the replacement nut, and put it back on this side. Okay, once you get that little nut in there, you see that little hole in the little screw? You gotta tap that to spread it out a little bit so that it holds inside that nut, it locks it in. So you just take your little tap, stick it in there, Get it to where it's solid, give it a little tap, and it should be locked in place. To test it, just crank it, and it should move the screw without coming out of the setting. Yep, it's working fine now. Now I'll just center the sight back, and then the next time I get to the range, I'll make sure it is properly aligned. Now the rear sight is on there as well as the front sight, so I'll just change the grips out back to the original ones, and I'll be done. So there you have it, it's back to the old grips, which I'm just gonna to have to deal with until I can find maybe some that don't have any finger grooves in the front, and it has the new sights on it. This front sight and rear sight are gonna make this a lot easier to get a good sight picture on. Like I say, I'm not sure about these rear sights, but I definitely like the front sight and we'll see with the rears. Now comes the fun part. Tomorrow I take it to the range, do a little shooting, and get the sights zeroed back in. And then my winter carry gun will be ready to go for the rest of the winter, and maybe beyond. Oh, and don't feel bad for those other grips because they found a nice home on my Smith & Wesson 686 Plus. Now I can carry my 586 for my everyday winter carry. And then if I'm needing to be a little fancier or if there's werewolves around, I can just throw my 686 in the same holster and go about my business.